an extremely brief marriage, an unbelievable $7 million estate, and a string of vicious crimes in both Australia and the United States. The truth about the beauty queen killer is seriously messed up. The Australian-born Christopher Wilde moved to the United States in 1969 and grew a sizable fortune through entrepreneurship and investing. However, under the flashy facade was a twisted criminal who preyed on women and teenage girls. Wilder became known as the Beauty Queen Killer, having murdered a Miss Florida finalist and tricking unsuspecting victims into thinking that he would help them become professional models per the Charlie Project. Wilder was born in Sydney, Australia on March 13, 1945 to an Australian mother and an American father. As his father was an officer in the United States Navy, Wilder spent a lot of his childhood moving from base to base with his family per the Chronicle Express. He reportedly lived in various parts of the United States States and Southeast Asia before his father retired and made a permanent home for the family in Sydney, according to Seven News. Growing up, Wilder was described as a, quote, sickly child, and he reportedly had several brushes with death. However, that frail child soon grew into a monstrous teenager that began to prey on young girls. When he was 17, Wilder talked a girl into taking a ride with him to a nearby beach, where he sexually assaulted her. Police arrested Wilder and charged him with the crime, but a psychiatrist determined that Wilder was not a risk as a reoffender, and a judge gave him probation instead of prison. This left Wilder free to stalk the beaches of New South Wales. In 1968, Christopher Wilder met a young woman while she and her family were visiting the beach in New South Wales for Seven News. The two quickly became a couple and married later that year, but wedded bliss didn't last very long. The trouble began when Wilder's new bride discovered photographs he'd taken of other women wearing her swimwear. Wilder also allegedly sexually propositioned both his new mother-in-law and sister-in-law. The final straw came when Wilder was questioned by police about a series of sexual assaults on nearby beaches. His wife soon made the move to divorce him, and according to reports, she would later tell police that Wilder had tried to kill her on two separate occasions. In 1969, a 24-year-old Christopher Wilder sought his fortune in sunny Florida. He quickly established himself as an electrical contractor and investor in real estate per the New York Daily News. Wilder's risks and hard work paid off, and he was soon driving a Porsche and living the life of a rich playboy. This lifestyle would hardly be described as one befitting of a serial killer in the making. Though there were no confirmed murders tied to him during the 1970s, Wilder reportedly had a trail of sexual assault victims during this era. They're often extremely eloquent, and they're they're disguised and they can fit easily in. Wilder's wealth enabled him to prey on people more successfully. He invested money in expensive photographic equipment, including the latest cameras per Seven News. Wilder would then hunt for potential victims wherever he thought young and attractive women might be congregated. He scoured local shopping malls and beaches and began using an alias, posing as a professional photographer or as a modeling agent. After isolating his victims, Wilder would allegedly sexually assault them. In 1974, Wilder used this exact M.O. to victimize a young woman he met in a Florida shopping mall. Wilder allegedly drugged and raped the woman and was later arrested, but was only given probation for the incident, per the New York Daily News. In 1977, Wilder was arrested for another attack. Prior to his trial, he was evaluated by a court-appointed psychiatrist who rendered a chilling assessment, calling Wilder a mentally disordered sex offender who should be confined, per Seven News. Despite the psychiatric report, Wilder had the charges dropped and was a free man. Christopher Wilder visited his aging parents in Australia over the holidays in late 1982, but he didn't take a break from his violent proclivities. In fact, he wasn't back home in New South Wales for long before he was arrested for sexual assault. He offered me, um, right then and there, $100 to come and work for him. Wilder reportedly returned to his old stomping grounds of Manly Beach, where he preyed upon two teenage victims. In between Christmas and New Year's, he allegedly kidnapped and sexually assaulted the two girls and was soon arrested by a Seven News. He also faced charges for taking nude photos of the girls per the New York Daily News. However, he didn't stay in Australia long enough to face trial. While out on bail, Wilder secured permission to go back to the United States, and he never faced trial for the charges. After that, it wasn't long before he embarked on one of the bloodiest crime sprees in history. The brutal murder spree that would vault Christopher Wilder into the FBI's top 10 most wanted list began on February 26, 1984. That day, he had been competing in the Miami Grand Prix, while Rosario Gonzalez was working as a spokesmodel for an aspirin company by giving out samples to racegoers. According to the New York Daily News, Gonzalez was last seen leaving the racetrack with Wilder, whom she was acquainted with. He was very attractive, he was witty, he, was, he had always seemed to have plenty of money. Days later, on March 5th, 23-year-old Elizabeth Kenyon disappeared. She was last seen 
climbing into a Cadillac with a man who matched Wilder's description. A finalist in the Miss Florida pageant, it was later reported that Wilder had reportedly proposed to Kent, only to be rejected. It's suspected that Wilder killed both women, but their bodies have never been found. Kenyon's parents even hired a private investigator who gave information to the Miami Herald linking a local race car driver to the disappearances of two local women. However, when police attempted to arrest Wilder, they discovered he'd withdrawn $50,000 from his bank account and fled. Christopher Wilder reportedly went to Tallahassee and conned 19-year-old Linda Grover into believing she could be the next cover girl for Vogue. He allegedly knocked her out with a blow to the head and threw her into his car for the New York Daily News. After driving the teen to Georgia, he apparently checked into a hotel where he savagely beat and sexually assaulted her and allegedly tortured her with shocks from electric wires. Grover managed to lock herself in the bathroom and began screaming so loudly for help that Wilder abandoned his room and hit the road again. Next, he drove to Texas, where he continued to use his modeling ruse to find new victims. He kidnapped and killed 24-year-old Terry Walden and left her body in a canal. After abandoning his car near Beaumont, DNA evidence linked Wilder to the disappearance of another missing woman. Hairs belonging to 21-year-old Teresa Ferguson were found inside the vehicle, making him the prime suspect in the murder case. Ferguson had been abducted from a mall in Merritt Island, Florida, and her body was later discovered in a Florida canal for Orlando Sentinel. From Texas, Wilder moved north to Oklahoma, now driving the Mercury Cougar belonging to Walden. This is where he reportedly kidnapped 21-year-old Susan Logan and drove her to Newton, Kansas, where he raped and murdered her. Christopher Wilder reportedly found his next known victim, 18-year-old Cheryl Bonaventura, in a shopping mall in Grand Junction, Colorado. Her body was later found having been stabbed and shot multiple times. At a 17 Magazine photo shoot in Las Vegas, Wilder was able to abduct 17-year-old Michelle Korfman. He reportedly murdered the teenager and dumped her body on the side of the road in Southern California. Wilder also kidnapped 16-year-old Tina Marie Rosicco and drove her to Indiana, assaulting her both physically and sexually on the way. Outside Gary, Indiana, Wilder forced Rosicco to help him lure another victim, Dawnette Wilt, into his car. The three of them drove from Indiana to upstate New York. For two days, he beat and tortured Wilt before leaving her stabbed body on the roadside. However, Wilt was still alive, and she was able to flag down a passing car and get medical treatment. She survived, telling police that Wilder said he was on his way to Canada for the New York Daily News. Following Wilt's escape, Wilder shot 33-year-old Beth Dodge and stole her car in Victor, New York. He then drove with the still-captive Rosicco to Logan International Airport in Boston. After purchasing a plane ticket for Rosicco to go home to Los Angeles, he drove off toward the Canadian border. On April 13, 1984, Christopher Wilder was at a gas station in Colebrook, New Hampshire, when he was cornered by two members of the New Hampshire Highway Patrol. Wilder was attempting to leave the station, presumably on his way to Canada, as the border lay a mere 10 miles away. Trooper Leo Jellison moved in on Wilder and tried to physically restrain him, per UPI. During the scuffle, Wilder was able to fire two shots from a 357 Magnum. Both slugs entered Wilder's chest, with one of them exiting and striking Jellison. Wilder died almost instantly. The pathologist who examined Wilder's body concluded that the bullets fired from Wilder's gun were simultaneous and both entered his heart. Wilder's death was ruled accidental as it's believed he was trying to use his weapon to kill Jellison and accidentally shot himself instead. Trooper Jellison recovered and eventually returned to duty and was later honored by state police. Throughout his life, Christopher Wilder had proven to be financially savvy, and he left behind a healthy estate after his death. In 1987, the Sydney Morning Herald reported that Wilder's estate was valued at a whopping $7.3 million by a Florida judge. Another judge had previously ruled that the proceeds of Wilder's estate should be split among his surviving victims and the families of the women and girls he killed. The family of Terry Walden was awarded $3.6 million of Wilder's estate. The proceeds of the settlement were divided equally between Walden's husband, daughter, and father. The Sydney Morning Herald reported that Wilder's estate was hit with claims of more than $55 million, all of which was being handled by Florida attorney Harold Holt. Wilder's will left the majority of his assets to his parents, but the lawsuits from the victim's families blocked this transfer from happening. Wilder's parents and brother, who still resided in Australia, understandably had some concerns about the estate. Wilder's brother told the Sydney Morning Herald that the family did not want any of the money, but that they were concerned that the courts might find them financially liable for any suits against Wilder's estate. Sadly, Christopher Wilder's brutality may have claimed even more victims than are known. At least a dozen unsolved murders and missing persons cases from Florida, Australia, and New York all point towards Wilder as a potential suspect. For instance, the Canberra Times reported that the 1966 slain of 57-year-old Wilhelmina Kruger had eerie similarities to the murders of Marianne Schmidt and Christine Sharrock 
victims of the 1965 Wanda Beach murders, of which Wilder was a suspect. The Daytona Beach News Journal also suggested that Wilder was suspected of having killed 15-year-old Colleen Orsborne as he was staying at a local motel in Daytona Beach, Florida, when Orsborne went missing in March 1984. Wherever she was going, she wasn't planning on going far. In 2011, DNA finally confirmed that some previously unidentified remains found in the area belonged to Orsborne. 20-year-old aspiring model Shari Ball left her home in Boca Raton, Florida to pursue a career in New York and was never seen again. Her remains were found in western New York at a wildlife refuge. Authorities in New York put Wilder on the top of their list of suspects, as witnesses recall seeing a man fitting his description in the area at the time per the Buffalo News. The true extent of Wilder's crimes remain unknown. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.